Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Size Up. So this is the second video in the series to learn AWS, the basics of Amazon Web Services and the cloud concepts. Today's video will be about storage. So the main components that you need to learn about storage are S3, EBS, EFS, S3 Glacier, Snowball, and Storage Gateway. So there are six essential components in AWS storage that you need to learn. So let's start with S3. So what is simple storage service known as Amazon S3? It's essentially a storage for the internet that you can use uh, where you can store ob uh, your objects. So it's a object storage system. So now the question is, what is an object store? Um, some of the common interview questions that you can encounter is uh, understanding the difference between an object store versus a block storage. So to, I'll dedicate a separate video to this, but I'll explain at a high level what they are. So what is an object store? Object storage, it's also called object-based storage in some terminology, is a general term that refers to the way in which we organize and work with uni units of storage called objects. So it's the data itself. The data can be anything you want to store. It can um, range from a family photo to a 400,000 page manual for assembling a rocket or an aircraft. So objects aren't always directly um, mappable to files. They may be subfiles, a portion of a file, or simply a collection of bits and bytes related to the other and not part of any file. Second point, it's expandable amount of metadata. The metadata is data about the data and it is defined by whoever creates the object storage. It contains contextual information about what data is, what should be used for, its confidentiality, or anything else that is relevant in the way in which the data is used. It also has a globally unique identifier. So this identifier is a 128-bit unique value given to the object in order for the object to be found over a distributed system. So this way it's possible to find the data without having to know the physical location of the data. Now, let's look at block storage. Block storage are files split into evenly sized blocks of data, each with its own address, but with no additional information, such as metadata to provide more context for what that block of data is about. You're likely to encounter block storage in the majority of enterprise workloads. So object storage, by contrast, doesn't split files up into raw blocks of data. Instead, entire clumps of data are stored in an object that contains the data, metadata, and the unique identifier. So there's no limit on the type or amount of metadata that you can attach to each object, object which makes object storage more powerful and customizable. Metadata can include anything from the security classification of the file within the object to the importance of the application associated with the information. Anyone who stored a picture on Facebook or if you liked a song on Spotify, it's uh, object storage and that's the simple usage for it. But in the enterprise data center, object storage is mostly used for um, these kinds of storage needs where data needs to be highly available and highly durable. So in, in a nutshell, S3 is an object storage service provided by AWS. Now let's look at the second key storage feature, which is EBS. We touched on EBS while discussing some compute services. So let's look at it more in detail. So Amazon Elastic Block Storage, EBS, provides block level storage volumes for use with EC2 instances. EBS volumes behave like raw, unformatted block devices. So this is your block storage service. You can mount these volumes as devices on your instances. So you can mount multiple volumes on the same instance, but each volume can only be attached to only one instance at a time. So you cannot reuse volumes and attach them to multiple instances. You can create a file system on top of these volumes once you attach them to an EC2 instance or use them in any way you would use a block device like a hard drive. You can dynamically change the configuration of a volume attached to an instance. EBS volumes are highly available and reliable storage volumes that can be attached to any running instance that is in the same availability zone. And this part is very key for examination purposes. So EBS volumes that are attached to an EC2 instance are exposed as storage volumes that persist independently from the life of the instance. So with EBS, you pay for only what you use. 
So you can attach multiple volumes to the same instance within the limits specified by your AWS account. But if you need additional um, EBS, if you need to attach additional EBS volumes to your instances, then you can request it from EBS um, Amazon. It's also recommended that um, through EBS, data must be quickly as accessible and requires long-term persistence. EBS volumes are particularly well suited for use as a primary storage for file systems, databases, or any other applications that require fine granular updates and access to raw, unformatted, block-level storage. EBS is well suited to database-style applications that rely on random reads and writes and throughput-intensive applications that perform long, continuous reads and writes. There are a couple features of EBS that I wanted to discuss, which is equally important to learn for the examination purposes, but I will go deep dive into each of these components in a different series and in later videos. Let's move to our first, uh, our third service, which is EFS, which is Elastic File System. So e, um, Elastic File System, or known as EFS, provides simple, scalable file storage for use with EC2. With EFS, storage capacity is elastic, growing and shrinking automatically as you add and remove files, so your applications have the storage they need when they need it. So with Amazon EFS, it's a simple web service interface that allows you to create and configure file systems quickly and easily. The service manages all the file storage infrastructure for you, meaning that you can avoid the complexity of deploying, patching, and maintaining complex file configurations. EFS supports a network file system version, so the applications and tools that you use today work seamlessly with EFS. Multiple EC2 instances can access the same EFS file, which is quite different than EBS volumes, providing a common data source for, source for workloads and applications running on more than one instance or server. With EFS, you pay for the storage used by your file system, and there's no minimum fee for the setup cost. So EFS offers two storage classes. One is standard, and the other one is infrequent. The standard storage class is used to um, used for more frequently ac uh, accessed data. So the infrequent access, as the name suggests, is a lower cost storage that is designed for storing long-lived, infrequently accessed files, um, and that's why it becomes more cost-effective. So the service obviously is highly available, scalable, and durable. These are three terms that you will hear repeatedly throughout this training course. The EFS file systems store data and metadata across multiple availability zones and um, in an AWS region. The EFS file systems, they can grow to petabyte uh, scale, high levels of throughput, and allow massive, massively parallel access from EC2 instances to your data. So now let's move to our fourth component, which is Glacier, S3 Glacier. So it's quite related to S3, but the gla term Glacier means something frozen. So this is for cold data storage. So S3 Glacier, it's a simple storage service. Glacier is um, a storage service optimized for infrequently accessed data known as cold data. Glacier is an extremely low cost storage service that provides durable storage with security features for data archiving and backup. So with Glacier, customers can store their data cost effectively for months, years, or even decades. Glacier enables customers to offload the administrative burdens of operating and scaling storage to AWS. So you don't have to worry about capacity planning, hardware provisioning, data replication, hardware failure detection and recovery, or time-consuming hardware migrations. So there is, um, in a nutshell, Glacier is a cold storage system that AWS offers. So there are three, um, well, I'll, I'll leave Glacier at this and we will deep dive into more Glacier details in a later video. Now let's moving on to Snowball. As the name suggests, it snowballs, which is referring to transfer of data from on-premise to the cloud. And this is what you would use to Snowball for. for. So the AWS Snowball service uses physical storage device to transfer large amounts of data between Amazon's simple storage, which is S3, and your on-site data storage location at a faster than internet speed. By working with Snowball, you save time and money, and it provides powerful interfaces for you to use, um, create jobs, track data, and track the status of your jobs through no completion. 
Snowball devices are physically rugged devices that are protected by AWS Key Management Service, KMS, is something I will deep dive later in another video. They secure and protect your data in transit. Regional shipping carriers transport snowballs between S3 and your on-site data storage location. So now um, there come some features of Snowball that you should remember. For regions that are in the US, um, in the US you get 80 um, terabytes to 50 terabyte models are available. For any other region, it's only 50 terabytes. There's enforced encryption that protects your data at rest in phys and during the physical transit. There's no need to buy or maintain your own hardware devices. You can manage your jobs through the Snowball Management Console. You can also perform local data transfers between your on-premise data center and Snowball. You can do these transfers through Snowball Client, a standalone downloadable client. Or you can transfer programmatically through the S3 REST API calls with the downloadable S3 adapter for Snowball. It's a, it has its own shipping container and it's an e-ink display changes to show your shipping label when the Snowball is ready to ship. So f um, in a nutshell, Snowball helps data migration in large scale from on-premise to S3 or vice versa. Now the last of the components for storage is storage gateway. It's quite important uh, to know in depth what storage gateway is. So to give you an overview, storage gateway connects an on-premise software app appliance with cloud-based storage to provide seamless integration with data security features between your on-premise IT environment and the AWS storage infrastructure. You can use the service to store data in the AWS cloud for scalable and cost-effective storage that helps maintain data security. There are three types that um, a storage offers three file based three types of um, software appliance. First is file-based, volume-based, and third is tape-based storage solutions. So file gateway, it's a file gateway supports a file interface into simple storage service S3 and combines a service and a virtual software appliance. So by using this combination, you can store and retrieve objects in S3 using industry standard file protocols such as file, uh, network file system, NFS, and server managed block, SMB. So the software appliance or gateway is deployed into your on-premise environment as a virtual machine, and the gateway provides access to an S3 as files or file share mount point. The second is Volume Gateway. A Volume Gateway provides cloud-backed storage volumes that you can mount as Internet small computer system interface devices from your on-premise application servers. It uh, supports of two kinds of configuration. One is cached volume, second is stored volumes. So cached volume uh, stores your data in S3 and retain a copy of frequently accessed data subsets locally. Cache volumes offer a substantial cost saving because um, on primary storage and minimize the need to scale your storage on premises. There's stored volume if you need low latency access to the entire data set. First configure your on-premise gateway to store all your data locally. Then asynchronously backup point in time snapshots of this data to S3. So this configuration provides durable and inexpensive offsite backups that you can recover to your local data center EC2. Third is tape gateway. With a tape gateway, you can um, cost effectively and durably archive backup data in Glacier or Deep Archive. So that's only for um, cold data. So in a nutshell, I have gone over the six essential components to reiterate it's S3, EBS, EFS, S3, Glacier, Snowball, and Storage Gateway. If you like my videos, please don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel for future um, content. All right, bye.